This is how we do the plan a lot of our new ventures. You know, we put together the 80-page business plan and all the financials. We expect this thing to be extremely successful after some time. So a better way to do this, and I think you'll see this for both today, is we start with something that actually works. Maybe it's, it's just a J-Sport, right? But then it can go to, what do we call these? Scooters, bicycle. Scooters? Motorcycle, and then there. And this, as you think about your startups and your ideas, I would have you think about how to make this happen. Bo went from basically uh, a leasing company, to an operating company, to a licensing company. And now has created this software that's licensed to um, many different clients and users. As far as the background, Bo received his associate's degree from Dixie State. He has a bachelor's in business finance at BYU Idaho. He had a minor in IT, and his emphasis uh, was in entrepreneurship. Now, Bo served on a mission to Russia, the Latvia Stoke mission. Well, close, close. It's been it's Eastern Siberia. Uh, then he went back to school. Um, before that, he had served as uh, an international shipping and logistics manager at uh, Kiani. He also worked at Network Essentials as an SEO and PPC specialist. The most important thing I tell you about Bo is he is um, married, has a beautiful wife, two boys, and a little girl, and um, it's a great privilege to have him here, and uh, I welcome Bo. Thank you. <laughs>
from here today with is the knowledge that you know you don't have to have you know massive amounts of resources or, or great connections. If you, have a, if you have a good idea and determination, then you can build it into something that's valuable and meaningful and hopefully has a positive impact on society and become a man. So when I was going to school, uh, as Jason mentioned, I got my uh, my associate's degree from Dixie State, which is a small local school community college in St. George, Utah. That's where I grew up. Um, after that, I, I was hired from a company as a Russian translator where I got my mission, and they relocated me to Idaho. And in moving to Idaho, I worked there for about three years for a company called Kayani, an international uh, logistics and shipping coordinator. And I quickly moved up the ranks there. I had a lot of ambition. And, uh, oh, I remember this, this experience that kind of pushed me to go back to, get my, to finish my education. And, and over a period of six months, we, I had been working in that position within the company. It was kind of called Corporate America. Um, I'd say roughly a $100 million business. And we, we were um, basically going through and, and doing cost-cutting measures and, and renegotiating shipping contracts and warehouse Opening up, you know, uh, warehouses in Mexico, Finland, and all over the world. And over the course of about six months, we had saved the company about five hundred thousand dollars in costs. And in your business classes, you know that it, you know if you save money on the cost, that goes directly to the bottom line. And I remember I went in and I was petitioning for a raise, and I had a small family, and uh, I didn't get the raise. Like my petition failed. I thought I'd, I'd position my case, you know, very, very nicely, and I didn't get the raise, and so I was, I was a little upset and in frustration. I said, you know, I'm done. I, I quit. I'm doing something different, and which took me to into the tech field with a friend doing uh, uh, search engine optimization and click uh, management, and really exposed me to a completely different side of business uh, with uh, in regards to technology than I had been exposed to before. And I went back to school, taking initially night classes, and then full-time enrollment, which led me into some of Jason's classes. So my path to getting to where I am today is very, you know, non-directional, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, paths that, that, that got me here. Um, it wasn't just a, hey, I knew what I was going to do. I climbed up the corporate ladder and had the right opportunity, but in the same industry, you know, I jumped across different industries here. So, um, don't think that just because you have one failure, you're moving from, from one industry to another, that you're not going to be able to do something great or, or, or have success, because that's not the case, because I've done multiple times getting here. Um, so while I was in college, and I was, I was paying for college and, and providing for my family doing uh, tech-related things, and uh, I was in, enrolled in entrepreneurship management classes, and uh, I was getting my degree in business Finance, uh, emphasis in finance, and um, I was uh, connected with some guys that were working in the oil field in North Dakota. And at this time, so this is late 2010, early 2011, and I think many of you probably know about the Shell Revolution and the Energy Revolution that happened in the United States, and you know, perhaps that began about 2006 to eight. And it was really picking up steam about this time. And I was working on some performance and some modeling and some different business ideas up in that space and had some exposure to opportunity up there. Um, I had no I had, I had no previous experience. I had no uh, base knowledge or education when it came to oil and gas uh, or the energy industry in general. And at the same time, I was of performance, models, and business ideas within that space. And that's where we currently operate today. I would like to say I know quite a bit about it now. Um, so I remember I, there's so many things I could tell you about the importance of, of, of finishing your education. And I'm so, so grateful that I finished my education and it is the most valuable thing that I consider that I have to my, to my name, which is my education and my family. Um, so I was I was working with uh, some 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 different people up there on some different business opportunities, and I was 
uh, currently enrolled at the time in some of uh, Brother Earl's classes on entrepreneurship, uh, specifically new venture creation, which was uh, 383, and uh, uh, entrepreneurship, man entrepreneurship management, which was um, 483. And those two classes have, I would attribute most of uh, the success of Trade Star to uh, <coughs> those two classes. So I didn't really know how to build a business until 383, and I didn't understand how to uh, truly you know, be a true entrepreneur until 483. And all the while, as I'm working on these business models, you know, it was learn something in the classroom one day, apply it to the business model the next day. So we started and incorporated Trade Star in. So we 
took this option, we got in line, and, and had this kind of kicking line uh, for optional purchasing the, this pipe, this equipment was a pipe to transport the oil. And the goal, uh, the goal at the time was to actually build the business to operate and independently hold the master service agreements with these oil companies, move the oil for them, for a fee. And we're moving along nicely, and we had a, I had a class uh, similar to uh, <coughs> a venue like this, and uh, Brother Earl was actually the instructor, and he taught us about risk reward curves and how not all risks are created equal, not all risks hold the same rewards, and taught some, taught some principles about how there's different strategies and different approaches to, to a business hold different risks and, and have different rewards. And so after that class, I went home and started contemplating other options because I understood how risky that, the, the, or I understood the risk associated with the current business model and approach to the business. So we, we started pursuing another option, which was actually becoming an equipment leasing company and leasing this equipment that was in high demand to, to other service providers that would have otherwise been our competitors. So we took our competitors and made them our clients as a equipment leasing company. Basically, the term of the, 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 term of the, the lease 
you take the residual value of the equipment again, and it's a very simple valuation, you get your, you know, a simple discount of cash flow, and there's no approach to it. So we went from a, you know, very you know, strict and rigid, you know, valuation approach to the business. What we wanted was a gratuity approach to the business. So all of these things, I'm telling you, I did not know when I went back to school. So I had no idea about, you know, valuations on gratuity compared to, you know, you know leasing models. Knew none of it. Um, uh, and all this I learned along the way. Uh, so we successfully started and we got the first contract, olive oil, for a direct uh, client. And in the middle of mid 2012, that obviously has since grown to you know, some of the majors in the industry like Snow Coats, Bill 66, many of the, the few, you know, name, names that you guys have recognized today. Um, and we've uh, successfully grown since then. We've, we've expanded business from originally out of North Dakota into Montana and into Wyoming and Colorado. And this last year we expanded down into uh, New Mexico and West Texas. So we basically run from the, and we all went in and out of Canada. So we run from basically the Canadian border all the way down close to the Mexican border. Um, at the same time that all this is going on and we're building this business and we're uh, growing this business, we were having challenges with um, growth because of uh, limitations on transparency and uh, reporting accountability because of the lack of technology that was in the space. So my previous experience with uh, a tech company had exposure to seeing how technology was applied to business. And I saw an opportunity, one within our own business, but also within the industry as a whole. And we, we began a new company, which is uh, Ministry of Logistics. We actually built our own technology suite because we went to the open market and said, listen, uh, we were sending drivers out to go basically pick up a load of oil and they were having a, a hand ticket, uh, they call it a hand ticket, basically a, a glorified big receipt that had five carbon copies tied to it. The driver had to take his hand and had to press the power and the truck drivers generally don't have great handwriting and different to find and track where your trucks were located. So we went and we looked for uh, technology suites that would enable us to do what we needed and wanted to do to scale the business. And we couldn't find anything that did what we wanted at a reasonable price. And I said, listen, I have, I have experience here. I know some people in this space. Um, let's see what we can do for ourselves internally at a much cheaper cost than outsourcing it. It might create another opportunity, a vertical within this space. So we started with something very small, going back to uh, Brother Earl's uh, uh, previous slide about an uh, MVP, a minimal viable product. It said, hey, initially our product, all we needed to do is to you know, create a load and track a load. Right? We're going to use an hand ticket still, but we want to be able to basically create a digital tracking system, um, uh, somewhere like a like QuickBooks, like a really kind of watered down QuickBooks. With, a simple framework, and then after we're able to track those, we want to be able to dispatch those loads. And we want to dispatch them out, and we want to be able to interact with that truck on a real-time basis, um, similar to like what Uber does for, or Lyft does with all the, the you know, uh, ride hailing apps that are out there right now. But this is for the crude oil space. So we we developed something. I mean, we had nothing. And we started with something, we built upon that, and now we license that out to a lot of our competitors to use our product. And a lot of our clients that are used to our product and love what, what, the, you know, what our product has to offer, uh, midstream logistics, they actually require a lot of their other, which 
there are competitors that require one of their other <coughs> carriers to license from us our technology. So we've actually created within our own business um, you know, a, a technology suite which I can, I can tell you right now that the margins in technology are substantially higher than transportation. <coughs> so top line might be smaller, but the, the margins are much better. Um, so we've had success within technology, um, and uh, um, over here. I'll show you more of the, uh, here's some of our, our trucks right here, the drill rig. Um, right here, here's the technology suite. So that case right there is basically what we ship out. It's a turnkey solution. Um, so there's no setup, no piece for setup. And in that case, you can see there's a, a Bluetooth thermal printer and an iPad with some paper. And you can literally take a truck that isn't part of your fleet, that isn't integrated with your fleet, you put that in the truck, and suddenly you can see where they're at, what they're doing, you know, what blows they're hauling. You can and dispatch and interact with that truck, and it can be incorporated into the fleet literally within you know, half a day. It's, uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's, we will, I can promise you, we will, would not have been able to do what we've done without the technology, or the technology that we developed. So over time, we grew the company. Um, this last year, we closed the year out, uh, close to $50 million in revenue. <coughs> All of the business that I was hoping we'd be able to do a couple million dollars or dollars of revenue. Um, there's so many lessons I've learned along the way. Um, I was thinking about what to talk about today, um, or I could maybe help you with, or there's something that might, might leave an impression with you. Um, there's a couple of lessons. I've, I mean, there's so many lessons I've learned along the way. I'm, I'm grateful for everything that I've learned. Um, one thing that I touched on earlier today is and I'm going to touch on it right now, is, it, is the importance for me, personally, of uh, the partners that I have in the business. A lot of people will go, say, hey, go it alone. I know that I've had personal conversations with my father-in-law. My father-in-law is a great man, uh, and he runs a successful business. And it, uh, I remember uh, multiple conversations with him that he's told me, do not partner with anybody. Pay someone to do it, then don't partner. Uh, then you don't need a partner unless they can do something that you can't hire them. Well, in this world, you can basically hire anybody to do anything. Um, and increasingly so for locally, they don't even have to be local. Um, and for me, my personal experience has been that my partners have, in the business have been, have, in my opinion, have made the difference between being able to hit something that is a you know, four to five million dollar business to something that's going to be a fifty to hundred million dollar business. There was a, a class that that I was in, and I remember it was well, I think it's a, some pie charts that were shown, and the whole the whole lesson was about, and, and the takeaway was that a small piece of a large pie is often much bigger than a whole small pie. And, um, and I, I, can, I can attest to that today that you know, I, I honestly feel that um, it's, it's, and it's not only about the moment. I mean, when I, when I go to work every day and I work on um, you know, building a business, securing a contract, operational agencies, and you know, looking at our ratios and basically managing the business, um, in my opinion, the money is the metric of measurement by which a business is measured. You know, you're successful or, or not successful on, you know, in Wall Street terms. You're successful or not successful whether you're generating profit or not. And there's so much more that you can get out of your business than just monetary gain. And I have gained a lot from my partners. Uh, one of which was, his name's Kevin Tallman, he couldn't be here today, he was scheduled to be here today, and uh, this last week he's had some uh, family emergency uh, issues for, that didn't 
a lot of them would not be here today. Trust me, you wouldn't be here. This place is beautiful. But, um, I actually met Kevin in a, um, in a class that I was TA. I was the TA of the class, and he was just a bright, uh, I always had bright comments on accounting questions. And this is all while, while I was in college, and uh, asked him to he could look at my books. Uh, needed some help with my books. The business had grown beyond my, my, my 202 accounting ability to keep my books. <laughs> And uh, he graciously, graciously accepted and you know, looked, in, looked at my books and started keeping the books. And uh, one thing led to another. I'm like, listen, I don't know if I could do the business without Kevin. Um, and he's fulfilled a much bigger role than I ever could have imagined. Sitting in that class, walking out first edition, the first time I'll walk up and say, hey, did you look at my books? Could you, you know, see what's going on? And not only from a business standpoint, but also from a personal, um, called spiritual standpoint. Um, there's been multiple times in business where there's one, one, one uh, time in specific that comes to mind where uh, I remember I was in, in Houston and the business was basically taking everything I had. And we're at a point in business where I'm like, is this worth it? Are we going to be successful? Are we not going to be successful? Can we make the right choices? Did, did, you know, so many questions are coming to mind, and uh, a lot of a lot of reflection on, um, and I don't want to call it doubt, but you know, doubt on my own ability, and having somebody by your side that knows you in a way and knows what you're going through and is able to be there and support you when others are not. I can say that there's a good chance I might quit before we would have before we achieved the success that we did had I not had the right partners there side by side pushing at the same time and, and, and helping build the business. So that's my personal experience with partners. I know there's lots of people who say don't have partners. I say my experience has been very positive. Um, everything that I'm looking at moving forward. Um, and other ventures that we're looking at, I'm always looking at who's the right partner in this business. Because I don't, I know I can't do everything, and I can't be everything to everybody. And um, you know, uh, my personal experience is that we've been able to be you know, stronger together instead of separate. So here on the right, here's a list of uh, some of our clients: Crescent Point Enterprise, a lot of. Uh, Producer companies as well as mainstream companies. <coughs> Our trucks, a fleet, some of the stuff. There's like a lot of financial data in here. There's um, more. Um, 
Um, we can come up here and we can look at um, know, where the drivers were by the last known location. Maybe I think here we can see historical data, graphs, charts, a lot of different reporting features. And all of this started with not the, the, the initial product was that we could enter in a load and track it internally. We could dispatch it if we couldn't communicate the track and see where drivers were. Here we can see, that, you know, here's our areas of concentration. We have drivers up here located primarily in North Dakota. Then there's the Colorado, Wyoming. And down here, uh, New Mexico and Texas.
for 30 days. Then on the, the equipment that we were purchasing, on, on the cap lease that we were purchasing the equipment with, we had negotiated the terms so that at the end of the month, we paid 30 days after we received the equipment. So we actually received payment on the equipment before we ever had to pay for the equipment. So it, it's just the, the, the Time. terms of payment is what it was. It was uh, just negotiating contracts in terms of payment. So we received payment before we had to make payment out and charging substantially more than we were obligated to pay for it. What you said first thing to grace Greatest strength of the giant. Uh, yeah. Um, I would, personally, you know, it's, it's good to know yourself, and I actually do a review every quarter. Okay, where am I going? What am I doing? And one thing that I think a strength that I think I have is, is being able to, um, I wouldn't say visualize, but be able to take lots of, of, of data in and have more strategy. So I don't consider myself to be really detail-oriented. I can be detail-oriented. I love spreadsheets. I love analytics. But I think my greatest strength is more being able to take a lot of data and analyzing the situation and, and looking at multiple options and multiple solutions to a problem and pursuing multiple solutions to that the, the problem at the same time. So that would be my, my greatest strength. My greatest weakness, I would say, is that it is probably comes hand in hand with strength, which is sometimes I tend to be, um, I wouldn't say scatterbrained, but um, I can get distracted between lots of things. I try to take on more than I think I can do sometimes. So like, I try to like, okay, yeah, just more, more, more. And sometimes I'll get overloaded and have to step back a little bit and say, okay, it's all back. You said you Uh, the break even point for trades? Oh, okay, so I mean, we were cash flow positive uh, plus one with the leasing business. A break even point with the, the equipment is probably about 60 to 90 days. You said you do a, a quarterly review. Is that of yourself? Or That's of myself, yeah. What are some questions or like elements that you include in that? Yeah, it was actually came from, uh, I'll give credit for credit too, it came from. Uh, Ron Mikan. Uh, doesn't Ron Mikan Sorensen? Yeah. So Ron Mikan from Sorensen Capital. Luke Sorensen, I think, is the principal there. But it was at BYU Idaho. It was a, a similar venue setting like this. They had four or five guys that had come in. Um, and he talked about the difficulty in managing um, you know, the work life balance. And he said that every quarter he would do a review and say, like, hey, what are my goals? And the goals are written down, so I have a, a, a calendar reminder that comes up to say, what am I doing? What are our goals? Personal, spiritual, and business related. Um, are we accomplishing those? Have those goals changed? Should we change those goals? Have, have my priorities in life changed? Adjust those goals and review them regularly so that uh, otherwise it, it, the goals Uh, with oil prices going down and the boom of North Dakota, like the production of oil decreasing, how is that affecting your company? And if it is affecting it, how are you guys going to counteract that? Yeah, so interesting, like when, when we see the biggest growth of our business was actually when oil prices started to decrease. So when, when that was like November of 2014, They've been cut by 70% now, but they've really started to, to take a nosedive. If you look at our growth, um, uh, about third quarter of, of 2014 is when we really started to ramp up. And a lot of that comes with, I consider it to be our value proposition, where you know, we have competitors in the space. If we provide more value, we, we all the oil, our, we consider our transportation costs to be less, our value to be superior. So, when oil is at $100 a barrel, 10 to 15 cents, these guys, you know, these guys are like, what's 10 to 15 cents? It's 
it's not even it's a tenth of a percent. It doesn't matter, you know. But now, ten cent, ten to fifteen cents is a make or break for these companies. So in many ways, it has actually made us more competitive. You know, it's brought along its own challenges where instead of in an expanding industry, we're in a contracting industry. But we continue to see growth even inside of the contracting industry, which you know we met with lots of different you know peers out there. They're they're quite amazed that we continue to maintain and have growth opportunities while everybody else is either going bankrupt or closing their doors. I so you said that the oil business is very up face to face. Like I know you, so like I'll do business with you. So as someone who didn't know anyone, uh, what techniques did you use? To, to break through that, because these guys seem like cowboys, they seem like people who don't have said on the internet, on Facebook, on Twitter. Yeah. So how, you know, how did you make that connect? Uh, so I, I, I kind of broke into the space by just old fashioned cold calling. Um, I, as I mentioned, I served a mission in Russia where you would track them all in hours with very little success. Um, you know, we, there wasn't a common to track 14 to 16 hours a day without a without invite in, and um, I don't want to say that compared to you, but you know, like your your success today doesn't determine your success tomorrow. And so there was, that's why it took six months. I mean, I can't count the number of times I got the notes that, yeah, we're not low interested, you know, um, but just understanding how to position it in a way that, you know, being a good salesman, I mean, I had to sell the business to, to get business, and, um, you know, I, I never lied, I never misled anybody. Um, but I got my foot in the door in places so where I'm like, I probably should have got my foot in. And you know, it took, just took that one one off one opportunity and that one connection kind of led to others. Yeah. Um, when you first started you said you didn't know really anyone and you raised capital through friends and fools and family and friends. <laughs> Who what is the what was the best source of I guess raising capital for you and for someone that has basically no real connections to someone? That, um, um, so in this space, um, t today I think it depends on your idea. It is what I would say because there's so many like you know crowdfunding you know, platforms out there now with Kickstarter etc. You know you can get funding in ways that Previously, were I mean, when I was in school, I would have never talked to a child because it just wasn't there. It's so new, uh, which is great. Um, so I don't think my idea would be a good crowd to have to pay to a business. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I had a, uh, a lot of great people involved that, that I, I came to know through contacts and relationships. You know, that, Willing to trust in me to build a business. Um, and then, and does that answer your question? Like, I'm, I'm trying to direct it back. Like, if you have a business idea here, um, what about that? So, everybody here knows a doctor. Who here knows a doctor? Who here knows a dentist? Who knows an anesthesiologist? Someone in the medical field? Probability is they have decent amounts of capital. Um, that they're always looking to deploy with great ideas, um, you know, to great ideas and, and, and people that are here to build a business. That's kind of where I started. For people that I, I mean, I didn't know that they had capital, but I would approach them, um, hey, I'm building this business, I'm a college student, um, you know, I'd love to go over some numbers with you, and you know, stuff like, you know, just basic intro. And uh, I remember I was at a father's and son's one time, and the conversation of what I wanted to do, and it was a he was an anesthesiologist in our ward, and you know, I had I didn't go there with any intention of trying to raise capital or it's just those opportunities will come up, and they just I don't think there's like a direct path to do this do that, they just kind of come up. Understanding you, you know, we have some key guys in the market. Any other questions? I think I've one more question. So you said you, you've had success with uh, your partners. Uh -huh. So what is it that you, what do you look for in a partner? It helps you find that. 
Um, for me, uh, there, there's a couple of key things that I look for in a partner that might be a big difference. Uh, one is that they're not motivated by money. Uh, so, and I consider myself to not be motivated by money either. I definitely think that dollar amounts in the business are very important. This needs to be profitable. Um, so, having the correct motivation in life, the uh, uh, work ethic. So, having someone that, that's partnered with you that can either work as hard as you, smarter than you, or harder than you. So, you don't want to be partnered with someone that you feel like is constantly going along. Um, and then the other one is just uh, Thank you.